Welcome pilots of the virtual skies. We are in for a treat today. We are in the Payware Airport, Stuttgart, Germany. Our destination is also a Payware Airport. Scenery should be fantastic. We're going to Dusseldorf, Germany, about 122 miles away. So a flight completely within Germany will be passing near Heidelberg, Mannheim, just to the west side of Frankfurt, uh, into Bonn and Cologne, and finally to the west of Dusseldorf and we'll be landing in Dusseldorf, 122 miles distant. Today we're going old, old school. This is a Lufthansa airplane. If you look very carefully at the livery, you can see just below those Lufthansa letters. I believe at one time this airplane belonged to Condor, which is also a German airline, but now it's in the hands of Lufthansa. This is a Boeing 737-200 a classic, classic early 1970s version of the most prolific passenger airliner in the world. And it'll be my first time flying it. I'm fairly comfortable with the glass cockpit, the modern Boeings, the, all the computers and the full navigation, vertical, horizontal, every which direction you can imagine. This is gonna be a challenge. I'm expecting to get fairly good lateral navigation left and right, but this has no auto throttle, no speed control. Uh, all the speed management will be done by the pilot, and also most of the vertical management will be done by the pilot. So unique challenge uh, for me. These are not turbofan engines with a bi uh, usually a turbofan has a jet in the middle uh, producing hot thrust and then surrounding it, there's another set of compressor blades that take uh, bleed air, air from around the outside, and that also heats up, but not quite to the same level. And that provides extra thrust, and it also provides noise abatement. So these older engines are a whole lot noisier, and they are not as efficient and not as powerful. But that is the way it was, and that's what we're going to be enjoying today. So. The jetway is attached. The cabin crew is along with us. Let's check our doors. We have our main entry door open. Our forward and our aft cargo doors are open so the baggage can be loaded here as we're boarding. So let's get the cabin crew aboard. Let's board ourselves and let's get this ship underway. Here we are on the flight deck. Oh, you know, before I get on the flight deck, I didn't want to come here right away. I wanted to follow a real-life error procedure and do what's called a rainbow check. Now, a rainbow check is what the air crew will often do before they even sit down. They come here, the first step into the flight deck, and what they want to do is check that fire extinguisher, make sure the pressure is in the green, the arrow is in the green, it's got enough pressure. Look at all these circuit breakers, make sure that none of the circuit breakers have been popped out. Check this panel, make sure the emergency rope is behind that panel, make sure it's attached to the fuselage. Check for any damage back here. You want to check the aircraft log books. You want to make sure there's no squawks or gripes that would stop you from flying here. You can check the emergency escape on the other side. Here's some more circuit breakers to check. You want to check the uh, pilot operating handbook. You want to make sure those Boeing manuals are available for reference. You want to make sure if there's a first aid kit that it's here and available. Make sure there's a crash axe. You can also check the minimum equipment list. Maybe there's a squawk about something that's broken or something that's missing. Check the minimum equipment list and see if you can fly without that particular item. On the back of the cabin door, you might see an airworthiness certificate. You might see a registration form. You might see a radio operator's permit. You might see an airline uh, registration form. All those documents you will want to be in place and you can sure do that by doing the rainbow check moving your eyes from the lower floorboard on one side of the flight deck move your eyes in a rainbow motion up over and down and even before you sit down a great check to do now before we sit down a couple things i like to do is hit the battery switch get the dc power started we can do that right there. There's a guarded switch on panel number two. These panels are numbered by Boeing to help the flow management. You can either 
move your eyes from bottom to top or top to bottom, but, but from left to right, there are panel number one, panel number two, this narrow panel in the middle is panel number three, just to the right of it, panel number four, and then final, finally panel number five. So we flipped the battery switch on immediately on the lower light bar. I want to move the position light switch to the on position, and that tells anyone outside that we are actively on the aircraft, engaged in flight operations. And then here in the number three panel, here in the middle, turn on the emergency exit lights, flip that guard down, and that will arm the emergency exits. That arm should go off here in just a bit, I'm assuming, I'm hoping. And reach down, push that APU switch on the light bar down into the start position, hold it down for a few seconds usually until you get a little movement. This gauge is called an exhaust gas temperature gauge or an EGT gauge. I can see right now it's labeled here as an EXH gauge. I'm not sure what EXH stands for, but it's doing the same job. This gauge will slowly climb into the green range and then it'll settle down. While we're waiting for that, let's go outside and take a look at those position lights just to give you an idea of what they are and what we're looking for. Here, I'll we'll show you here on the exterior, you can see these outer probes. These are the pitot-static probes that measure airspeed and air pressure. And we're gonna turn on the pitot-static heat a little later on and you'll get a, a view of those probes. But every aircraft will always have a white light showing to the rear and there should always be a white light showing to the rear and on the wingtips you'll see a white light when they're on and a red light on the left and a green light on the right. And I don't, maybe I'll need to get that generator running. Let's get that generator on. There we go. Now we're on generator power. This is the bus transfer panel. And anytime you change... Tube guard information, India. 2120 Zulu winds are light and variable. Visibility of miles. Sky condition BFR. Temperature 20, 2.12. Current altimeter is 299. That was... Uh... ATIS recording, Automated Terminal Information System. Uh, that's recorded information of a routine nature. And as soon as power went on the airplane, that radio became active. So um, now that we have this uh, bus transfer, whatever the source of power may be, whether it be the DC power or the APU auxiliary power unit that we're using right now, it's a small turbine that's tucked in the tail, or the power could come from a wall outlet it could come from a cart, either a di diesel generator or a turbine generator on an external cart, or it might come from the engines themselves. Whatever the source of electrical power, this bus transfer unit is going to help us manage that power. So we just toggled these two switches in the down position, and that put the power what's called on the bus. And that power is on the bus, and now it's available for use. So we can go outside, and we can see the white lights on the wing tips. See the white lights on the tips of the wings. And you should see a... Now, once you're forward, you, those white lights should not be visible from the front. But what you will see is a red light on the left and a green light on the right. Now, remember, we're flipped around because we're looking at the airplane in the other direction. But red, the easy way to remember that is red is the color of port wine. Port wine, well, a good bottle of port wine is on the left, uh, and it's red. If you, helps you remember the word left has four letters, L-E-F-T. The word port has four letters, E-O-R-T. And port and left, they're all there on the left-hand side as the uh, food truck just run to, runs into our wing. There on the right-hand side is starboard, and starboard is green, and the easy way to remember that is it's not port, it's not red, it's green, it's on the starboard side. And those are the position lights, letting folks know around us that activity is happening, and beware. So, emergency exit lights are, are on, the, you can see the armed indication has gone away, 
Position lights are on. I'm going to turn on the window heat to get some heat started on our windscreen. As we climb, the ambient air has a lower temperature, sometimes a much lower temperature. And if there's any moisture in that air, and it's less than 70 degrees Fahrenheit, then icing is going to occur. We could have fog, we could have icing to make uh, visibility rather difficult. Let's get to our checklist. See how we're doing on our check items. Battery is on, APU is on, stall warning check. Well, you folks who are familiar with Boeing products, the stall warning test is in the same exact place as you're used to it. Way up here at the top, we're doing a stall warning check. There it is. We'll do our mock airspeed check. We'll check the pressure on our cabin and our crew oxygen levels. We'll make sure that this guard is in the guarded position. Do not flip this guard up. Do not toggle that switch. That will deploy all the oxygen masks in the cabin and your flight will come to a very sudden end. Here's a little passenger oxygen reference chart to show you where those pressures should be. Leave the thrust reverser guards on. The service interphone should be in the off position. This radio and microphone panel, I'm going to flip it to PA for the public address system. And finally, the leading edge and flap indicator device is here. You can push the test button and make sure all those lights illuminate. Not sure what the test button does on the ADF panel. Automatic direction finder panel. This is a low-tech AM radio that's used for low-tech navigation. Uh, AM radio signals are how the Japanese Navy found the Americans in Pearl Harbor during World War II, December 7th, 1941. The naval aviators used an ADF to tune in to a local AM Honolulu radio station, and they used an arrow in their cockpit. They followed that NDB, or non-directional beacon arrow, right to Honolulu. And that old technology is still here in this classic airliner. And of course, even modern airliners depend on ADF, uh, but it's up here. So let's continue with the checklist. Uh, passenger signs are on, window heat is on, radio transponder set. And that tells me it's a good time to get our clearance. Clearance, let's come down here to the radio panels. I'm going to have a virtual first officer working with me today. And the good thing about that is she's going to be working the radios and I don't have to deal with much of this antiquated radio equipment. But uh, we'll put her to work right away. And we will... I've already planned our route and I have, I'm going to validate that route with a program called Pilot to ATC. Uh, other than a live controller, this is the absolute best uh, software available for flight planning and for air traffic control. We are using, our route's almost direct. It's a uh, SID or standard instrument departure called the TAGI 4B, T A G I. TAGI 4B is going to be our departure out of Stuttgart, it's going to take us northwest. And then once we're near uh, Dusseldorf, we're going to pick up the GoGo 1B, GOGO 1 Bravo, to runway 5 right. And that'll be our ILS approach. So that's filed. And let's call the controller and get our clearance. Stuttgart clearance delivery, Lufthansa 4 Tree, ready to copy. Lufthansa 43 is cleared to Echo Delta Delta Lima, fly the Tajai 2H departure, with the Tajik transition, then as filed. Expect departure runway 07. Climb to flight level 050 via the departure. Expect higher clearances 2 minutes after departure. Squawk 5256. Lufthansa 43 is cleared to Echo Delta Delta Lima, fly the Tagi 2H departure, with the Tajik transition, then is filed. 
Climb to flight level 050 via the departure. Expect higher clearances 2 minutes after departure. Squawk 5256. Lufthansa 43 rear back correct. Altimeter 29 and 904 contact ground on 118.6 when ready for pushback. Have a good morning. Altimeter 29 or 9 or 4 ground on 118.6 Lufthansa 43. I moved our altimeter setting to the local setting of 2994. We are in Europe, so more ac that's a inches of mercury. In Europe, you would use the metric uh, equivalent, which is 1040, 1014 hectopascals. If you did not know the altimeter setting here on the ground, but you did know the field elevation, you could just simply roll this barrow dial until you see the field elevation there in the window, and that would automatically give you that ground. Of course, you've got to be sitting on the ground to do that, so you can't do that in the air. But if you're on the ground and you don't know the setting, that's an easy way of getting it. We also entered here in our set altitude, our initial clearance to 5,000 feet. We set our runway heading here in the heading uh, MCP a mode, mode control panel. This upper panel is referred to as a mode control panel. We put the heading in as 070, and we set our transponder to the assigned frequency, 5256. And now I'm going to turn the dial not all the way to the right, which is the TARA mode. That's the... Uh, traffic advisory and resolution mode all the way to the right. But I'm going to put it to the second to the right, which is the TA or traffic advisory mode. You don't want it all the way to the right because those radio frequencies on the ground can be hazardous to ground personnel. But the TA mode will allow the ground controller to uh, monitor us and um, then they'll be able to identify us. And when we enter our flight information into the flight computer, we'll actually have uh, some indication on the screen of who we are. So while we're down here, let's do a couple of tests. These are our uh, fire extinguished bottles to use them, pull up and rotate. We don't want to use them, but we do want to test them. Let's move the switch to the left and get that fire bottle test. Cargo fire test. We'll do a lights test, turning on every light in the house, checking all the light bulbs, make sure we don't have any bulbs that are out. We've already checked the bulbs of the flaps indicator. We don't need to worry about that. Okay. Uh, light test looks pretty good. Yaw damper test. I'm not sure what the yaw damper test does. Engine oil test. Now here's our engine oil level at 3.2. When you push the quanti engine oil quantity test and the quantity drops to zero, and then it allows the needles to rise up to their levels again, just to make sure the needles aren't stuck. So we'll turn that light off, and uh, that test is complete. Not sure if there's oxygen masks for an oxygen test in this aircraft. Let's go back to our uh, before start checklist. We have got our transponder set, our parking brake is set, APU is started, hold APU switch to start for three seconds, close field and generator switches upon uh, activation. Okay. Engine start checklist. We're going to hold off on the engine start checklist until we're ready to start the engines. For right now, let's go to the flight management computer. This is a default uh, computer with the software, and I'm really not comfortable using it. Um, I'm hoping it'll help us in some way. I don't think it's fully sure how, but we're going to give it a try. Um, status screen database. Now, this is basically any 
any, uh, let's say we wanted to learn more about the airport that we're at. So we'll put in uh, Echo Delta Delta Sierra. Oh, I'm going to move the speed brake handle out of the way here. Echo Delta Delta Sierra. And that's now in the scratch pad. I'm going to move it here to the IDET. And now we can get some basic information about Stuttgart Airport. We can get its GPS location, its magnetic variation, its longest runway, uh, 10,937 feet. That's a monster okay. runway. Uh, elevation. Um, a runway. This is interesting. The elevation is listed as 1270. If the altimeter setting is actually correct, the way it should be, you should see 1270 here in the altitude window. So I think, oh, I know why. It's listed as 2992, and our altimeter setting was supposed to be 2994. So let's, oh, goodness. I wonder... 2992. Okay. Well, still, 1360 is still a little different than 1270. I'm, uh, of course, I'm not going to worry about it. It's just a little quirk that, that those numbers should match up. Let's go back to the index. Let's go to our uh, route menu. We don't have a company route or a pilot route list. So back to the index. Let's go to our departures and arrival. Oh, flight plan, flight plan. Okay. Origin. Echo. Delta, Delta, Sierra. Beautiful Stuttgart in southern Germany. We're going to Dusseldorf. You know, I've never been to Germany. The only way I know Dusseldorf is the uh, Hogan's Heroes series, uh, comedy uh, on American television, whenever they would... Uh, go to the Hofbrau for beer and always uh, sneak off to Dusseldorf. <laughs> anyway, Echo Delta Delta Lima for Dusseldorf. And now those were, did you notice they were empty blocks? Empty blocks is required information. Dashes are nice to know information, but if we put in our flight number, that's going to show up on the air traffic controller's screen. So we want to put in Lufthansa 43. And the code for Lufthansa now, in America, there is a cargo delivery company. It's a German company. It's called DHL. Well, the way to remember the uh, Lufthansa code know, is, is Lufthansa put in the D uh, for Deutsch, Deutschland, but instead of DHL, reverse it to DLH. DLH is the code for Lufthansa, and then you can use your flight number, in this case, 43, and that'll show up on the controller's screen, and um, you'll have access to that. Vertical navigation. Uh, here we have our target speed in the climb of 0.74. That's actually very aggressive. Speed limit of 250. Ooh, speed limit of 250 knots. Bless me, my goodness, COVID going on. I shouldn't sneeze like that. 250 knots at, uh, below 10,000 feet altitude. Transition altitude, that's a North American standard, 18,000 feet. I believe in Europe, that should be 7,000 feet. So I'm going to put that in the scratch pad and change that. That's for the climb. Now the cruise, uh, 0 0.80, I bet that's top speed. I know 0.82 is the top speed in a modern 737. So that's really fast. Uh, let's go to descent. Uh, it's not letting me go to descent. I'm not gonna worry about that. Let's go to uh, departures and arrival. Depart st uh, 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 Stuttgart, depart Stuttgart. We're using the taggy 2H departure on runway 7. So here's runway 7. We'll select that. And now we're going to go down to the next page, next page, taggy 2 hotel departure. And then we will go to arrivals. Dusseldorf arrival, and we're, now of course this could change by the time we get there, but for right now we're planning an arrival on runway 5 right 
and it's the go go one B on five right. So ILS to five right. We'll select that. And next page, go go one B is our. Um, oh, it doesn't like go go one B. Interesting. Go go one B. Go go one B for five right. Previous page. ILS five right. Go go one B. Invalid entry. It just does not like that. Let's take a look at this more closely. Five right. A star. Okay. Well, I really don't want a different arrival. The go-go is a very direct arrival. I'm looking at a. I'm looking at several possible arrivals. I don't like a big, a big arrival. Ha ha ha. Okay, well, how about the Babu 1B arrival? Let's see if our friendly machine likes Babu 1B. I'm anything if flexible. It's not liking that either. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to the Go Go 1B because that is my favorite. One more try. The Dissy one B. Let's see the Dissy one B. Really doesn't like those. I'm gonna execute what we have, and then we'll see if it'll take the go go one more time. Nope, doesn't like it. What would happen if I pushed go go and then pushed execute? No, it's it's not highlighting GoGo, -Go, so I don't think GoGo -Go is a go. I don't think GoGo -Go is a go-go, -Go, so we're gonna we're gonna fly the go-go, -Go, but that might not be in the computer. And because I fiddled right, uh, with the flight plan, I believe I'm going to have to request my clearance one more time. I might even get a new squawk, I'm not sure. Let's let's see what clearance delivery will say. Stuttgart. Oh, let's go back to clearance delivery.
I know this delay can be just a little frustrating, but believe me, it's all worth it. This program is so wonderful. Endeavor 429, we're on Texas Gabriel, Texas Julius. Texas Gabriel, Julius, Endeavor 429. Let's see what happens if I toggle the switch. I want to. I'm on ground. I want to go to clearance delivery. Yes, clearance delivery. Okay, here we go. Stuttgart clearance delivery. Lufthansa four three, ready to copy. Lufthansa four three is cleared to Echo Delta Delta Lima. Fly the Tajai two H departure with the Tajik transition. Then as filed. Expect departure runway zero seven. Climb to flight level 050 via the departure. Expect higher clearances two minutes after departure. Squawk 5314. Lufthansa 43 is clear to Echo Delta Delta Lima. Fly the TAGI2H departure with the Tajik transition, then is filed. Climb to flight level 050 via the departure. Expect higher clearances two minutes after departure. Squawk 5314. Lufthansa 43 rearback correct. Altimeter 29904 contact ground on 118.6 when ready for pushback. Enjoy your morning. Altimeter 29904 ground on 118.6 Lufthansa 43. That worked out fine. We just got a new transponder code, but basically it, it all worked out fine. Okay. Uh, we're holding off on the engine start checklist. Let's look at our performance, our uh, weight and balance numbers. Uh, before we started the flight, I matched our zero fuel weight with our uh, flight plan weight, I, the flight plan I pulled from SimBrief, so these numbers should all be correct. Right now we have no cargo. We could add some cargo. You can see just adding some cargo. But you can put it in and take it out. Uh, right now that would uh, ruin our landing weight if we added that cargo. You can also change the passenger load if you like. And what I like most about this is as you're fiddling with the weights, the center of gravity uh, reference will move back and forth and also it'll change the v-speeds this little v-speed scrap of paper will use for our takeoff speeds and for our landing speeds and once we start the engines uh, I believe these numbers will, will move along with the burning of fuel and um, they won't affect the v-speeds but uh, really wonderful system to uh, represent how it was in the days of the classic airliner and yet allow for a little modern flight planning. Okay, so the performance data is set. Let's get our pushback and engine start clearance from ground control. Stuttgart ground, Lufthansa 43, ready for engine start and pushback. Lufthansa 43, pushback and engine start approved. Push back and engine start approved Lufthansa 43. I'm going to call our pushback yeah, tug. Uh, we are going to runway 7, which means. Let's get out of this just for a second. Let's. Uh, runway 7 is to our right, so we need to have our nose to the left, our tail to the right, so we'll be pointed in the correct direction. Nose left, tail right. Always remember that before getting your pushback. Nose left, tail right. Better pushback is the program I use. This is a pre-plan. As long as the silhouette is yellow, you can move it there. Ground 
of the cockpit. Land acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you're ready. Ooh, I love the native Stuttgart tug driver. Okay, we have been cleared for the push, so I'm going to get the doors closed. And when we start the left engine, that jetway should pull away automatically, so I'm not going to worry about that. What I do want to do is make a final cabin uh, uh, concourse call to let the folks on the concourse know that they better run on down here and get aboard this airplane because we're about to leave. So I'm going to go to start passengers, passenger FX 2020. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Kev from the flight deck. On behalf of X-Plane Addicted and Passenger Effects, welcome aboard. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the final cabin call for Let's call for the tug. There is a very small On to cockpit. Tow is driving up. What I like about the Stuttgart Airport is that the jetways are really, really long. And, you know, many times if you've used a better pushback before, you'll sometimes see the tug driving through the building to, to get to you, but not here in this case. Here the, oh, here's our tug. Okay. All doors and hatches are closed, ready to connect. Set, parking brake. Parking brake is off. There goes the jetway. Stopping pushback, and you may stop the engine. Kind of cool to watch the nose of the aircraft being lifted. Ladies and gentlemen, Air conditioning off. the aircraft doors have been closed. So at this time, all electronic equipment needs to be turned off and left off until 10 minutes into Lean our flight. On. If you came on board with a mobile phone, please check that now and make sure it's turned off and left off until you are in the terminal. My name is Helen. I'll be the purser on your flight today, and on behalf of the entire crew, we would like to welcome you aboard. Flight attendants, arm doors for departure. In just a moment, we will be showing you a very important safety video. We ask for a few minutes of your undivided attention for this important message. Thank you and again welcome aboard. We've started the hydraulic pressure with these two switches. We've also turned on the pedostatic heat warm up those probes outside. We have turned our engine start gauge on the right hand side, the number two engine to the ground position, air conditioning off, dual bleed, uh, APU bleed is on. Notice that the pressure, uh, well, before we uh, uh, turn, when I turn the switch off, this pressure should read above 30. And now that we have it on, we're looking for an N2 above 20. Beacon on. Galley power off. Galley power off. Bleed 30 plus, engine bleed, valves open, engine start to ground. 
we've got an advantage. We can actually go outside the aircraft and we can watch our right aileron and right spoiler, our left aileron and left spoiler, elevator up, elevator down, right rudder, left rudder, and full spoilers. We can also, not sure if it'll show it or not, but we might also be able to see our thrust reversers. Up oh, there's our thrust reversers. And those are things you could never check from the flight deck. Let's get our taxi lights on. Not the landing lights for now. Let's turn on our wing light, anti-collision light. Not the position or the position lights on. Leave the strobe off until we're at the runway. Speed brakes down. There's the speed brake. Flaps set to five. Ladies and gentlemen, we do thank you very much for your attention. And now we invite you to sit back, Galley relax, power and enjoy on. the takeoff. The captain has made power communications available. So if you would like to monitor the air traffic, just off. tune your radio to channel Fuel 9 and your headset will be in front of you. We'll give you a little more information about our service plan for our flight as soon as we are in the air. Thank you and again welcome aboard. Okay, before takeoff checklist is complete. Stuttgart Brown, Lufthansa 4 Tree, ready for taxi, runway 7. Lufthansa 4 Tree, taxi, run by 07, via die by smile, kilo, hold short run by 07. Taxi to runway 07 via taxiways, mic, kilo, hold short runway 07, Lufthansa 4 Tree. volume there a little bit so we don't quite hear them through the door and off we go for runway 7 another advantage of being in the sim world throttle. That is my biggest disappointment with the classic jetliners. How about this scenery? The Stuttgart scenery is just so fantastic. Monstrously impressed am I. Taxiing a little fast.
Okay, transponder to TARA mode. Landing lights on. Engines to continuous fire. In a modern airplane, you might start the clock. Unfortunately, we don't have a clock to start, but we do have a clock. So just monitor the time. It's 7.28 and you can mark down that time. The contact tower on 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 8.8 full day. Tower on 118.8 Lufthansa 43. Lufthansa 4. Uh, I'm sorry. Stuttgart Tower. Lufthansa 43, ready for departure runway seven. Stuttgart Tower. Lufthansa 43, ready for departure runway seven. In the four three winds, Sari Light and Virir Bru cleared for takeoff, runway zero seven. Cleared for takeoff, runway zero seven, Lufthansa four three. Throttles to ninety eight percent. Airspeed is alive. Eighty knots. Be mindful of ground effect. Your airplane will be very efficient close to the ground. So you have a tendency to lift off before you're really ready to fly. Aim one. Rotate. Rotate. Watch out for ground effect. Maintain your pitch. Positive rate. Gear up. Radar director on 119.85 Lufthansa 43. Center on 127. Center Lufthansa 43. Flaps up. to 5,000 feet. Lufthansa 43, good morning. Radar contact. Lufthansa 43, radar contact. Speed under 250 knots. Flaps full up. Autopilot on. Lufthansa Altitude hold on. Climb and maintain flight level 120. Climb and maintain flight level 120, Lufthansa 43. Heading select. You can see that I have a heading bug on and the altitude hold is in yellow. So it's, it's uh, controlling our altitude, but we're certainly not there yet. And we're going to get a step climb to our uh, cruise altitude of flight level 280. Monitor the speed, 239, make sure you're under 250. I was starting... Lufthansa 43, you are off course. Turn left heading 002 to return to course. Heading 002, Lufthansa 43.
Frankfurt Center, Lufthansa for Tree, request direct to Tango Alpha Golf India Kilo. Frankfurt Center, Lufthansa for Tree, request direct Tango Alpha Golf India Kilo. I was going to ask the controller if I could avoid one of our waypoints, but he has not gotten back to me. So we fly the course as published. We're above 10,000 feet. We can turn our landing gear lights off. We can turn our engines off with continuous fire. One thing, oh my goodness, a silly mistake I made. Never turned on the seatbelt signs. Oh, that is a major blunder. Lufthansa 43, you have traffic at 11 o'clock 9 miles at flight level 160. Lufthansa 43, climb and maintain flight level 180. Climb and maintain flight level 180, Lufthansa 43. Let's just take a moment and enjoy the beauty of our aircraft. Notice there's no cabin crew aboard. Also notice there are no passengers that you can see through the cabin windows. This is uh, this is the ghost ship. I hope one day I'm hoping the developers will add a will add some people. Also, in my opinion, too many of the window shades are pulled down. When I'm in the cabin, I hard to find a seat with a good view. Lufthansa 43 resume navigation. Resume navigation Lufthansa 43. a discontinuity in our route because our approach 
is directly after our departure, our, our SID. Our star is directly past our SID. We don't have any waypoints in route because this is such a short flight. So what I did is I took the first waypoint on the approach and I'm adding it right after the last waypoint of the departure. And I did that by selecting it, putting it in the scratch pad, and then moving it into those boxed squares. Remember, whenever you see boxed squares, that's required information. The aircraft is not recognizing as I'm passing over waypoints. I don't exactly know why that is. So I'm manually, when we pass over a waypoint, I'm manually moving the next waypoint up in sequence so we continue on our, on our route. Lufthansa 43 climb and maintain flight level 240. Climb and maintain flight level 240, Lufthansa 43. So far, the aircraft is doing a wonderful job at the climb. Now, we would like to hold a 1500 feet per minute climb on our VSI, or in this case, it's an instantaneous VSI. It's better than a VSI you'd find in a smaller airplane. Um, but remember, we're pretty heavy. And the higher we go, um, we're losing airspeed, and we're slowly, sl but we're sacrificing our airspeed to maintain our climb profile. Our cruise is at flight level 270, 280, and if we were to climb much higher than that, I'm afraid we, at this weight, we probably couldn't do it. Lufthansa 43 you are off course. Turn left heading 343 to return to course. Heading 343 Lufthansa 43. I am just a little off course. She's pretty observant. Five miles and one minute and 16 seconds to tag it. And then that's our last waypoint until the first one on the approach, which is go go. And so we've got a, a long stretch after tag it. And the whole flight is 122 miles, and the next stretch is 97 miles. So most of the flight is made up of this next segment. 2.7 miles from Taggett, and we'll be on a heading of 320 to GoGo. Lufthansa 43, resume navigation. Resume navigation, Lufthansa 43. Move the landing gear into the off position. Let's do our checklist.
after takeoff. Seatbelt switch, we'll leave it on for now. De-ice closed, open, gear up and off, flaps up without lights. Uh, hydraulics, pressure and quantity, and uh, pressure, uh, altitude pressure, check and set. altitude is 28,000 feet. Our landing altitude is 147, which is closest to 150. And we can check that out by looking down here. EDDL is too... Okay, 145 is the elevation for landing. We're using runway five right, so we want our course to be 51, and we want our radio at 111.5. Lufthansa 43 climb and maintain flight level 280. Climb and maintain flight level 280, Lufthansa 43. That's our top of fun. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna put it over. Here. I'm gonna put it over here. Uh, here. I think as long as the TFR switch is illuminating that right hand light, I think I'm okay. But my habit is to have the frequency on the left side of the radio. So just for my habit, I'm gonna move the TFR light to the left and have the correct ILS frequency on the left hand side. I know it's a minor thing, it probably doesn't matter, but you know, you're in a rush, you look down quickly at the radio panel, you want those frequencies to look correct. So in that regard, it's a good thing to do. Altitude hold, autopilot on, heading hold, and then when we get to turn on to our final approach, I'm going to turn this dial to VOR lock, and that's going to capture the localizer left to right. It's going to give us our lateral guidance, and then that'll have a yellow light. Here it'll say VOR lock with a yellow light. And then once we've captured it, that'll change to green. And then I'll move this dial to auto approach. And that's looking for the up and down, the glide slope. And then that will be a yellow light. And then once we've captured the glide slope, that will also turn to green. And if we were in a more modern aircraft, we could set up for an auto land. I'm sure this airplane does not have auto land capability. Flight director, I'm going to move this to heading. I haven't really understood what the GPS setting on this does. I know the nav setting is going to allow me to use my radios for navigation as I'm landing. But uh, the GPS is probably used somewhere in the cruise. I'm not sure what that might, what position that might play. I'm going to spin my auto brakes to maximum, 
Notice that there is no RTO position. There is no a rejected takeoff position for the auto brakes. Anti-skid. Inboard, outboard, these are guarded switches. I'm going to leave them guarded. If you look closely at this flight deck, it's rather dirty and kind of grimy. It looks like it was built in the early 70s and it has remained the same since then. Um, I wish the developer, I'm, I'm actually glad for the grime. It's, it's nice to have a classic cockpit with this amount of grime on it. But I wish they would also make a clean version. Uh, one great thing about this airplane are these windows up here. These are called eyebrow windows. You don't see these in modern uh, jets. But of course, scanning for traffic is important. And the, I believe these eyebrow windows add a little benefit. Besides, they just have a little bit of a cool factor. Hard to put, hard to quantify the cool factor. Right now, we're just south southwest of Frankfurt. Ten minutes to go, 59 miles to go, until we get to Gogo and start our approach. Uh, we did not set our altimeter to the setting for above the, the transition altitude was 7,000 feet here in Europe. We're going to spin that to 2992 or 1013 millibars. Hectopascals. Not sure what you call that. Is it millibars or hectopascals? I'll have to learn. So we're a little bit above our assigned 28,000 feet. Pull back on the power just a little bit. sure exactly what function that altitude hold switch plays. La for three, you are of course. Turn left heading 300 to return to course. Heading 300 Lufthansa 43. I am so close to course. I shouldn't even be bothered with this. This is, we are, we are really pretty much right on our course. Lufthansa 43 resume navigation. Resume navigation Lufthansa 43. I told you we were on our course.
see how these shades are very few of them that are all the way up. minutes 12 seconds 31 miles We talked about the ADF radio on the overhead. There's another ADF radio here on the pilot not flying side. I hadn't noticed that. That's very cool. I'm a big fan of non-directional beacons. I love to tune in the middle marker, which is usually an AM frequency at ADF. And then not only can you hear it, identify it, but if you have it set to Not one of your needles. Tree, expect the Gago one Prevo arrival with the Gago transition for the ILS approach to runway 05 right at USL Dove cleared direct Gago. Expect the Gogo one Bravo arrival with the Gago transition for the ILS approach to runway 05 right clear direct Gago Lufthansa 43. Oh, we hit a patch of turbulence and the passengers all scream. But this, uh, you can see these ADF uh, needles here on the pilot not flying side, and those are controlled by the ADF radios. When they're not receiving a signal, they'll be in the hor they'll look horizontally. flight. This flight, I don't know if you noticed the skies when we started, but it was just in the early morning, so many times turbulence is reduced on a morning flight. It's the afternoon flight where the temperature changes happen, where much of the turbulence, turbulence is caused by changes in temperature. One air mass meets another air mass. minutes 13 miles till top of descent when we start to make our way down I'm gonna speed it up a little bit Frankfurt Center Lufthansa Fort Tree requesting flight level 080 Lufthansa Fort Tree descend and maintain flight level 080 Descent and maintain flight level 080 Lufthansa 43.
Lufthansa 43 descent and maintain flight level 080. Descent and maintain flight level 080 Lufthansa 43. to gain airspeed. Now, now remember, I want to control descent. We're at just over 2,000 feet per minute, but I also want to control airspeed. If you look here at the pillar, you'll see that our maximum landing gear extension speed is 270 knots. That's the same as a modern airliner, but the flaps one and the flaps two Maximum is 230 knots. On a modern airliner, that would be 250. So we are Lufthansa less forgiving. You have traffic at 2 o'clock, 8 miles at flight level 170. Less forgiving than a modern airliner. I want to be down at 200 knots before I start putting in the flaps. And remember, our V card up here, we want to have our landing speed at 132. Radar Center on 118.75. Have a nice day. Center on 118.75. Lufthansa 43. Center Lufthansa 43 descending to flight level 080. Lufthansa 43, good morning. Radar contact. Oh, I love the fuel quantity test, but zero in the center tanks, and there's our fuel pump quantity in the wings. mentioned 31 miles before, I believe I was in error. That was 31 miles until top of descent. Um, I, I mentioned it was 31 miles to go-go. That was incorrect. Uh, now we're 31 miles from go-go. When I mentioned 31 miles earlier, it was 31 miles from top of descent. I realize that now and I apologize. 
We have an ETA of 10 minutes and 17 seconds. Our total distance is 54 miles. quite as low as I would like it. And of course, in real world, you would hold off on reducing your speed until you are probably about five to seven miles from the airport uh, for spacing and, and traffic. The air traffic controllers would always uh, be telling you, keep your speed up, keep your speed up. But in my first flight in this airplane, and I'm gonna fly it a little slower, so I don't bust his speed profile. And, oh, and also remember, below 10,000 feet, we will want to be below 250 knots. So actually, we're doing really well on our speed. We could even we could even make it a little slower. We're leveling at 8,000. You can see our speed is dropping quite a bit. And I'm going to go ahead and put in our first two notches of flaps. There's flaps one, and there's flaps two. And the next flaps threshold, you can see, is 225 and then 210. Four, three, expedite climb to flight level 080. Expedite climb to flight level 080 Lufthansa 43. Descended a little too much. I assumed that the automation wouldn't let us do that, and I was wrong. feet. With no auto throttle, I'm having to finesse the throttle to help out the autopilot.
Lufthansa 43 descend via the GOGO 1B arrival with the Gagov transition to 3000 feet altimeter 2985 at Dusseldorf. Descent via the GOGO 1B arrival with the Gagov transition to 3000 feet altimeter 2985 Lufthansa 43. Okay, now we're down to 3000. seem to have to help out the autopilot just a little bit whether it be controlling throttle or whether it be a slight little nudge on the stick on the yoke we're, all, we're descending at a thousand feet per minute that's not quite as fast as I would like But our speed profile is pretty good. Remember, 225 is what we're looking for for our next notch of flaps. Our approach heading will be um, 052. Five, one is what's over here. Runway five, zero five one. Okay. I'm going to move the dot nav dial into the VOR lock position. So we can capture localizer. Twenty-three on the speed. I'm going to go to ten on the flaps. I'm sorry, five on the flaps. Third increment. Two eighteen on the speed. We're going to, go to ten on the flaps. We have nav lock. Notice the nav lock is changed. Is green, not yellow. Move to auto approach. So we're waiting for glide slope interception. I don't see the runway yet. Lufthansa 43 clear for ILS approach runway 05 right contact tower on 118.3. Have a nice day. Cleared for ILS approach runway 05 right tower on 118.3 Lufthansa 43. Tower 
Lufthansa 43 inbound for ILS approach runway 05 right. Lufthansa 43 good morning. Radar contact. Continue ILS to runway 05 right call when established on fire. Continue ILS to runway 05 right will call when established on final Lufthansa 43. Still do not have the runway. Oh, yeah, there's the runway. It's over on our... What's it doing way the heck over there? <laughs> I don't know why we have nav lock when we're so far off the runway. Okay, 15 on the flaps, landing gear down. Speed is getting a little low, 126, 125, remember our target is 131, 30 on the flaps, and now 40 on the flaps. very high to my eye. The bossy poppy looks great. There's the outer marker. Fast on our speed, 142, we're looking for 131. on glide path close to pretty much right on speed kind of giving up on the autopilot here I don't have nav lock or glide slope on the autopilot but at least the four three windows are light and variable clear to land runway zero five right Clear to land runway 05 right Lufthansa 43. At least the autopilot is not preventing me from hand flying the aircraft. Just a little bit below speed, a little low. Prepared for the reversers. Speed brakes are on. Middle marker. Decision height continue. A little bit of float. Actually, quite a lot of float. 
Lufthansa 43 exit runway when able. Yeah, it'd be nice to land first. shutting off that left engine early that allows me to set the parking brake turn off the seatbelt sign and get that jetway moving right away
Notice the parking guidance indicator just ahead of us here. Well, folks, when at first you don't succeed, when at first you can't, uh, when it, well, let's say you have eight people coming to dinner and you only have seven apples, what do you do? You make applesauce. <laughs> so instead of turning one way, you turn the other. Let's see if this will work. Notice the parking guide just ahead of me. It knows I'm a 737-200 and it's giving me left and right indications. That's the ultimate sign of victory, is hearing that jet bridge. And now the other engine can come off. And we can open the doors. We can get the rest of these lights cleaned up. Fasten seatbelt signs off. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has turned off the seatbelt sign. You may now remove your seatbelts. And what a beautiful day. 
Oops. Oops. Oh, I heard, I thought I heard the jet bridge coming my way, I guess not. What is going on with the jet bridge? Nope. No jet bridge. Okay. Well, folks, hope you got something from that flight, my very first one, and I'm going to work on that to make that even better. But in the meantime, hope you enjoy this recording. <laughs>